Welcome to the Writing Gym Podcast. We're here to pump up your writing. And now your host, Andy Brixey, personal trainer at the Writing Gym. Hey there, writers and muse daters. I'm really excited about sharing today's episode. I got to speak with Vivian Jameson, a Writing Gym alum, and she shared her fantastic experience in the Writing Gym and will share with many of you the amazing tips that she discovered including how to revise your fiction manuscript to publishable, how to find an agent, how to improve your craft and increase your publishability, and so much more. Thank you for listening, and happy writing. Hey there, writers and muse daters. Welcome to this very special episode with Vivian Jameson, a recent graduate of our Writing Gym programs. Today, we're going to get the inside scoop on the program and Annalisa and anything else that Vivian wants to share with us. Thank you so much for joining us today, Vivian. Very happy to be here. So why don't we start by you telling me about your current work in progress and uh, where you stand with that? I just finished the Publishing Mastermind um, course with Annalisa and at the end um, had a completed manuscript. So this manuscript has been seven years in the making um, through various iterations and uh, but uh, only with Annalisa's help I was able really to pull it all together. It's a complicated uh, manuscript. I think uh, literary fiction would be the best description for it. Um, so now it's at the copy editors. I am done and dusted with my portion of it, uh, and I'm working on my submission packages uh, right now, query letters and such, while it's at the copy editors, and then I hope to get it out to uh, an agent that I know who represented me in the past, and then, uh, if, uh, and then go from there. So yeah, super excited about that. So just to clarify for our readers, you didn't um, just finish a first draft. You actually revised your book through the writing gym. Yeah, I started this book. uh, I would say the first, this is my fourth um, revision, major revision, which I think is not uncommon when you're um, getting uh, manuscripts ready to go out. The, you know, when the first time you put the end, you think, I wrote a book, but you know, in reality, that's, your first draft and there's a lot of work that needs still to be done to make it readable, reader friendly. Um, so um, probably I ran into Annalise in the writing gym. I, I sort of became aware of her through, I uh, live in Vermont through the League of Vermont Writers and was interested in, in speaking to her and was interested in some of the talks that she gave there and uh, then was in touch. So when I connected with her, I was really on the third draft and uh, I we sort of worked through it through the VIP writing course that she has and I realized at the end of it that there really needed to be a major revision done so I um, stepped away in Romana Lisa she for me for about six months and I did a major rewrite of the the book um, and then we were back together she did a read through and then we did the one-on-one uh, twice weekly sessions um, to really put the final, uh, pull the final uh, manuscript together. I'm very happy with it. I think one thing that she really helped me with tremendously was um, craft and, and specifically pacing. I, I'm a pantser by nature, so um, you know, you don't choose that, that just happens. I don't stick well to outlines, etc. But there's a technique to get a solid manuscript when you're a pantser, and Annalisa really helped me find that. She helped me find my writing process and how um, the working on characterization and then working on pacing and plot, um, you know, how it all ties together. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, at the end of it, I, I, no matter what happens with this manuscript, of course, I hope it gets published, but. Uh, I learned a tremendous amount in terms of going forward um, uh, in terms of, of craft because that that in the end is what gets a book over the top is my belief. Um, I uh, always say that I aspire to the Steve Martin school of, of accomplishing things, which is you just get so good that people can't ignore you anymore. So it just, that's 
partly why it took seven years. I didn't have the craft in the beginning to really develop a complicated manuscript like this. So, um, you know, that's, that's what's really helped. So, um, is her input to help me understand themes and how to tie back to them and making, making the manuscript multi-layered, which is really what's important when you're writing literary fiction. Um, and, uh, you know, keeping the, keeping the writer engaged, or the reader engaged, which is so, you know, how you write and what you write is very different than what a reader wants to read. And that's where you have to learn the craft to pull that off, I think. So, uh, yeah. And also, you really need to, with this type of book that I'm writing, uh, you need to really know the characters uh, inside out and backwards and that comes from writing about them writing about them rewriting about them and it took three or four years to really flesh out who everybody was and where they needed to go it, it uh, some uh, characters in my manuscript completely changed positions <laughs> you know the sort of uh, foolish naive one became the wise one I mean that's how it all had to um, had to uh, come together so um, yeah and that only came from you know play, playing with them and working with them and writing it and and throwing parts out and bringing different parts forward and um, and in the end it all there, there's a funny magic to it I mean that's what I felt that um, you know my job was to sit in the chair and just work hard at this and allow whatever was supposed to flow in to flow in. And in the end, that that's what happened. There was sort of magic that appeared that you weren't really sure where it came from. But you're like, Oh, you know, probably it's deep in your subconscious somewhere, but um, you know, in all the many different drafts and things that were happening, eventually there was a very um, complicated dance that occurred that pulled the whole thing together to the end that I wasn't aware was there. Um, and even Annalise at times, um, until it was sort of all down on paper. So, yeah, so that was, uh, that was it. One of the things I should mention is um, when I was working with Annalisa, through her suggestion, I did a book uh, club with her and some of the alumni. It was on To Kill a Mockingbird, which has, um, you know, a, a similar, you know, I don't aspire to that book. I mean, <laughs> much about my pay grade, but it, it, it has similar themes. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that and talking about uh, that type of, you know, excellent fiction with other writers in the writing gym and Annalisa, and that really helped to move my craft forward because you could see how it applied to your own book and you could also see how a master did it. And um, that made a big difference in terms of, uh, you know, pushing things forward for me. Yeah, I, I love those things. I love that she offers those those smaller those smaller little programs. So if you you know can't be involved in the full writing gym or you're not ready to quite make that step yet, you know you can do things like like the book club and you know take take the time to you know maybe learn maybe learn a couple of the craft elements in, in one of the other workshops or take one of the open salons that she offers and kind of you know get a little bit of a taste of you know what it would be like to, to live your author dream. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think part of that experience is the camaraderie you get with people. I think in my past experience, this is not my first manuscript. I had another manuscript. Well, I would say one other solid manuscript uh, on my road up. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to find um, people who are as serious um, as I was, I think, meaning in terms of when I put my heart into something, it, it, you know, I, I go for it. Um, and so that's what I really enjoyed to be around other writers in the writing gym that were, you know, serious about their craft and serious about doing it. I'd been to writers groups in my community and writers groups online, and I just never really found the right fit for me. So um, I think she really vets people. Um, you know, to know that they're serious and this is something that they want to pursue, um, that, uh, you know, it makes it a little, uh, you know, I think you get a lot of help and support from, from people like you and also by the other writers that, uh, through the process, which is very helpful to, to go forward as well. Cause you know, part of, I think a major part of writing a manuscript and getting a manuscript that you feel is ready to go out, um, 
is overcoming fear, right? It's, it's overcoming your own self-doubt. It's over sitting down and going, oh, that's, you know, you read it and you're like, oh, this is terrible. You know, and then you read it the next day and it's like, yeah, you know, it's not that bad. There's a lot that has to do with mindset and getting yourself in a place that you can allow the story to come through. And that um, takes work and it takes support and it takes people who understand that. And I think um, certainly the writing gym does that perfectly, or at least it did in my case. Um, because yeah. if you're out on your own and, you, and fear starts to rear its ugly head, um, it, can, it can be hard. It's not just writer's block. It's just you, you, you don't seem to get your flow. And the flow is what's critical to, um, to get a manuscript grip to work, uh, I think. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, we, as the personal trainer in the writing gym, mindset is, is what I focus on. It's, you know, we, we meet weekly and talk about it, you know, where you are, what, you know, what are your fears, what's going on, what's your struggle right now. And it's funny because, you know, like you said, it's not just writer's block, you know, our brains have a way of working, a way of blocking a way of making sure that we don't achieve what we want because of that fear, because to your brain, it's protecting you. You know, um, we had a recent experience with a, with a writing gym member where he had no idea that he was experiencing fear and doubt. He came into a session and said, Oh, like I haven't gotten anything done this week. I, I, you know, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I haven't gotten anything done. I haven't, haven't found that creative flow. And it all came back when we, you know, peeled back those layers and took a look. It all came back to the fact that he is incredibly close to finishing his very first manuscript. Oh, and he, yeah. <laughs> and he is, is terrified about what comes next. He's scared and, you know, nervous and has all these unanswered questions. And so his brain, rather than letting him set down and finish the manuscript, and do the work was just like, what if we just didn't? What if we just protected ourselves and went and played video games instead? And unless you have, like you said, a group, a community to talk that out with you, someone who's, you know, asking you the questions because they know that this, this boils down to a fear problem. Well, and that's, you know, even though this is, you know, I've been writing seriously for 10 or 11 years, you know, and this, this book has taken some time to get from, you know, I wasn't working exclusively on it in the beginning, but even in the last few weeks of the end of the manuscript, I mean, why am I going at a snail's pace? What the heck? Like I was in 20 pages to go for like ever. And even my friends and people around me are like, you know, what's, what's wrong? Well, I, one day it dawned on me, this is fear, right? This is fear that's stopping me from finishing for the same reason. And even though I've been working at it a long time, and this is, you know, my fourth time through this manuscript, it still reared its ugly head yeah. because you're afraid of failure. And as soon as you finish, then there's the potential it will fail. While yeah. you're still working on it, then of course it can't fail because yeah. you're still working on it. So yeah, you have to, I think every writer, um, you know, you have to learn those lessons and go through it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very helpful if you're with people who've been through it before. And, yeah. you know, and as soon as I identified that, boom, it was finished in two days. Yeah. Really? You know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, you, it, you know, it's all about getting out of your own way. In, in my experience, it's getting out of your own way constantly. And, you, you know, you keep, keep wanting to get in your own way by overthinking, by getting fearful, by all sorts of things. So it, it takes a lot to get the mindset right. And the mindset's critical if you're going to, um, you know, get the best out of your idea and your manuscript, right? And that's what I think the writing gym helped me a great deal with. So, uh, yeah. And then, you know, they help you all the way through the process, getting your first draft ready. And then in my case, um, you know, I came in sort of along the process, meaning having other drafts. But um, it's also you know, being led to the point where you realize, you know, that I have to majorly rewrite this. I mean, Annalisa didn't say that, but she, <laughs> she helped me to realize it myself, right? So, um, you know, that's part of it. It's just, uh, you know, you're, you're helped in a very supportive way, right? And then, um, and then you can go forward and get the best work that you can. So, um, yeah, so that's the exciting part of it. So tell us a little bit, you talked about, you know, being a part of League of Vermont Writers and other writing groups. Tell us about 
your writing life before you met Annalisa and got involved in the writing gym? What was that like? Well, I am a second career writer. Um, I have, um, you know, another profession, which is uh, sort of far flung from, from the creative creativity of writing. Um, but it's something that I've always sort of battled with, uh, with my day job is, is sort of finding a way to use my creativity and getting involved in writing. So I had a large learning, um, you know, curve, <laughs> I think when I started in terms of the, um, you know, someone who's come through an MFA program or something like that. However, it comes down to your ideas and your creativity and how, you know, how well you're wanting to work at it. So, um, you know, I just sort of rode away and then, you know, I, I had some early success with uh, my first, was really a novella, got an agent, but you know, it doesn't, I really think once a work is ready, it goes without a great deal of trouble. I mean, you have to find the right person. But the second manuscript that I had, I had a I had representation out of a fairly big agency in New York. And, you know, it got almost all the way up the hill. But then, um, you know, we didn't get, we actually didn't present it to publishers because it just never really got to the point where it was ready. And my agent was, was, you know, kind enough to sort of say, you know, you need to go back and really work more on craft and work on some more points. So, um, you know, live more life and get more depth to, to writing because you, you, you know, in learning to write, in my experience, you go through different phases. I mean, I, you, you get ideas down. He did this, he did that, da, da, da. You're getting the plot. And then you go through this period, or I did, where you're doing tremendously flowery writing. Oh my gosh, every sentence is the most beautiful thing that's ever hit literature. <laughs> and then, you know, that lasts for a bit. And then you realize, well, okay, now that you've done all that, you need to stop doing that because you, you, you need the, just a word or a, you know, a sentence or an idea. But all of that flowery writing is benefits nobody but yourself so you had to go through that to be able to find that place where one word fits or another word fits and then you know you start to think i mean for me the my final straw was pacing how to release information how to keep the writer propelled from one page to the next page to the next page because you know when i was finished my second draft you know i sent it out to you know an editor and also to some beta readers at one point and you know you could see they they were getting stuck and, and that's the craft of pacing, where you engage the reader early on, and then you can keep them going forward. Um, and um, so I think um, if I had to say, um, you know, what, what really um, pushed me forward was to really understand, um, you know, is to go through those phases and learn from them, but then also understand how to take small bits out of each in order to produce a manuscript. And read, 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 read. I was never a big reader as a, as a child, and um, funnily enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, the more I read, and the more I read classics, you know, everybody says this, but the more you do, uh, the better you get, because you you know what it's necessary to, to um, you know, write a good book. And that's a personal thing, right? Some people yeah. like certain books and like don't like other books, but in any case, I've read, I've learned things from books I've hated because I'm like, yeah. Hmm, I, I really don't want to sound like that. Maybe, maybe it worked for them, but it's not <laughs> what I'm after. So, you know? Um, yeah. So it's all, it's all a, a, a great thing, but I think, you know, everybody wants to write a book, but in reality, it's a hard thing to do. And it takes, it takes a village <laughs> and in my experience, and it takes time and it takes, um, you know, a lot of effort to to read a lot and think a lot and learn a lot but it's so worth it in the end because when you write a manuscript that really comes together you feel there's a magic there to me you know i know you and annalisa hate when i say this but whether it gets published or not <laughs> i feel like i did everything i could to bring the words to the page now the book almost has to get its own energy and i have to you know get queries out etc but um you know, it has to find its own luck in a way too. So, um, but I know that I did everything I could to, um, and it was, you know, it takes thousands of hours really yeah. to, to uh, work through um, some of those things. However, the next book, even though it, 
you know, as of last week, I was never writing another book because I <laughs> but of course you're, you know, you don't write for a couple of months and then you feel like you really need to write. Um, you know, we'll take less, a lot less time because I've learned a great deal on how to, how I, Annalisa and, and you and the writing gym really helped me get my process down yeah. for me as a pantser, as someone who, you know, how, how do I need to do this going forward? Um, and I've got a lot of, you know, really solid, I think, habits that will make it a lot easier um, going forward, you know. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, we really try to do in the program when we, when we meet weekly on mindset and we're doing these things with you guys and we're, and you're watching the modules and finding out about craft and you're having salons and talking about, you know, the craft and getting, you know, useful feedback and you're going to Q and A's and getting the chance to ask you know, questions about your manuscript and you're having the one-on-ones and doing revisions and things like that. You know, these are all skills that translate to your future as an author. You know, it's not the kind of thing where, you know, you're never going to be able to use these things again. These, these will be things that you will use for the rest of your writer life. And, you, you know, in, in, for example, in the mindset, having the ability you know, for you to notice like, oh, I'm doing this because of fear and knowing that was the reason and then finishing in a couple of days, you know, get having those tools and having the knowledge to move forward, you know, whether it's the manuscript you're currently working on or a manuscript that you're going to work on in five, 10 years, you know, you have that information and you're able to do that. And I do want to mention, you talked about reading and that's one thing, um, when people who are in, uh, the mastermind program are um, in their reading period, which means both Annalisa reads your manuscript and um, we make you read. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. And, you know, during my reading period, I did consume a number of books and I think reading the classics um, is as important as reading in your genre and, and, you know, some of the modern things. I mean, you just have to read across a really wide spectrum um, and even things I'd read before and I came back, you know, we talked about To Kill a Mockingbird because there are parallels with the book that I'm writing. Um, you know, I've read it twice before, but I just reread it again and it just made a big difference. Uh, you know, I mean, there were things there that I sort of pulled out um, for, for my own work. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that that's critical. And we didn't, I didn't really mention the modules, but um, they're, you know, tremendously helpful in terms of, of craft. And it, it comes down to being good that so you know it's it's comes down to being good enough that people don't ignore you anymore and and the way that happens is to write a well crafted book um you know i didn't really sort of know what i was doing and got representation but but it failed because i didn't have the craft to back it up really i think you know and uh so now i feel more confident that i know what i'm doing a bit better you know <laughs> it's it's uh you know it, it's it, it takes time and work and education, just like my, my, you know, first job or, you know, primary job career, um, took time to get good at and learn how to do and then, then perfect. It's the same with writing, you know, you sort of learn it and then you have to keep doing it. Cause even though you know the crap, the more you write, the better you get. And that's, I think what, uh, attracted me to writing in the first place. And, you know, Stephen King and all those people will say, you know, they, even the book they just wrote, they think, ah, you know, it's not as good as the next one I'm going to write. So you keep improving and changing. And, um, yeah. And I think the other thing is, is learning, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do and people keep saying it. Um, like, you know, you need to read a lot of books. Yeah. Yeah. But then when you actually understand it and do it, it, it does make a big difference. And the same thing with, um, understanding how pacing works and all of those things. Um, it just, uh, yeah, I, I just um, am amazed at how much I've learned, really, through this whole process. You know, how, how economy is critical. And they always say, oh, you know, every word in your book should push your plot forward. Well, yeah, but, you know, how does that work? But it does work. When you actually figure it all out and learn all these other elements, that exactly happens. And it was funny because in this last one-on-one -on -one revision, there were things that I pulled through that were, say, my darlings from – um, my previous, um, version, uh, or draft and 
100% of the time, Annalisa nailed them. Oh, no, a little too long, needs to be revised. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, I just really like the way that sounds. And I'm, you know, I'll just, <laughs> nope, that's, and, it, and they didn't fit there. Right? So, so she was correct. <laughs> a very few of those made it through. Um, but the idea it did and all the writing that was necessary to do that, to get down to the distilled version of the idea made it into the book and made, and was better because of that. So yeah, it's. So you've talked uh, a little bit about all, all the different things that the writing gym kind of gave you. Um, you know, you talked about the, the idea of pacing the craft, figuring out your process, um, the mindset portion of it. What do you think, like what, which one of those do you think is the, is the one that re- really finally gave you the results that you were looking for, which was your, your finished manuscript or was it a combination or all think, of the above? <laughs> I think it was a combination. Um, but I think pacing, I, I think that really is the final tool in your kit mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, you have to have characters people care about and you have to under, have a good story that you want to tell. But Ultimately, what was holding me back was it wasn't being paced properly, and I didn't really understand pacing. It was through the modules and through Annalisa and through my own reading and everything is, is the questions to ask every scene. I don't write for a word count. That's mm-hmm. never worked for me on a day-to-day basis. I'm just telling this great story. But then you work and work and work on making it into a very readable and compelling story. And those are the things that craft are, you know, you need to, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to have a successful book, I mean, the idea here is to have something that's, and and that's partly why I chose to uh, go with the big five or try and write, because to me, that's the bar. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's not that I have anything against self-publishing. I don't, but I, I think for me, um, you had to jump certain hoops in order, you know, you're, it was pushing you to get a higher level manuscript yeah. before it was even considered and um you know i think that was important to me um you know that you you would accomplish a certain level of quality so what would you tell other writers who ask about why they should work with annalisa um well i think annalisa has a very very profoundly large background in what she's teaching you. She also has a very um, astute ability to understand what you need to hear and how you need to hear it. She works with very, even just in the writing group, we're all very different people. Um, You know, I'm I'm a little more science oriented person. Um, We have other people that are a little more creative and, you know, and she can handle every one of those people in terms of getting the most of what they need to do, right? Um, and I think the other thing is she, you know, she, you trust her, her knowledge because she's done this a long time and she's an, you know, she's a published author in her own right. She's written books on craft books that work for me. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, and it's a one-on-one experience and she has a very good, um, sort of set up all around her with the modules. I mean, even, even the salons in the beginning, you're, you go and do these writing salons. You think, oh, I don't know. I'm working on my manuscript. Why do I need to do that? Well, it's, you just go and she gives you a prompt and you write. Well, what it does is open a whole level of creativity. You sort of shut down because you're working on a specific thing. Mm-hmm. And you need, to, you need to tap into that to open up your own, you know, it helps you with your manuscript by writing something completely different for 30 minutes and then just mm-hmm. reading it. And I, yeah, so I think, I think that would be um, the reasons why would she, she knows what she's doing and she knows what she's talking about. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, I've been working with other people for some time and, you know, I, I hopefully can recognize someone who's, um, you know, sort of not going to waste your time. So, yeah. And so now I get to ask you the all important last question that we ask everybody on the podcast. If you had one piece of advice to give to aspiring authors, what would it be? Um, Besides the all knowing, put your butt in the chair and write. (laughs) And if you're not putting your butt in the chair and writing, then there's probably fear or something you're keeping from there. But I, I think, 
I think where I wasted time um, in this seven year process, you know, looking back, it could have been done in three and it had to do with feedback. And I think that's a critical part of an inspiring, aspiring author. If you're not getting the right feedback from the right people at the right time, and Annalisa talks about that in her book and also in person, it can be very detrimental. I mean, I was at a writing group one time, which was, you know, your free local writing group. And, um, you know, it was a very um, discouraging uh, experience. And it really put me back, um, not in terms of criticism of my own work, but in terms of, you know, they, they basically didn't want to get better. They just wanted to hear fancy, nice things about their work, which is not what I wanted. I wanted someone to tell me what wasn't working and how I could fix yeah. it. So I think it's really important. Um, and, you know, it's the same thing with getting beta readers. You know, I, um, Annalisa's course um, is a bit of a financial commitment, but do you want advice from people whose, whose things you don't think are that good when you hear or read them, you know? So if you're serious about it, you need to get good feedback and you need to get good feedback because you can't write a book by yourself. And when you're finished, you need someone to help you with it to get the next draft out and that um, means you need feedback from someone who knows what to say and when to say not to discourage you and also to um, help you make your your product your manuscript better so that's what I would say just try and really uh, watch the feedback you're getting um, and when you're getting it because it can really waste a lot of time and it can also um, you know, be, be discouraging and keep you from really reaching the potential that you have. So, and that was one thing with Annalise and the whole group. Um, it was very positive, but also very constructive. Mm -hmm. You don't care about positive feedback if it's not helping you improve. <laughs> like, but yeah. that's the thing to be in, to get that feedback in a supportive environment. Um, I think really meets the world in terms of pushing you forward as a writer. So that would be my advice watch That's fantastic uh, advice well if I could t have told you know younger Vivian <laughs> you could time travel and go back to old self and be like listen yeah. you're this wrong <laughs> yeah just you need to you need to really be you know sort of picky about who reads it and when they read it and what kind of information they've given and you know I paid an agency to go through it but they really sort of just wanted my money they didn't mm -hmm. want to help me um, and it came out being nothing more than a copy edit, which was supposed to be a developmental edit. So there are pitfalls out there and, um, you know, you need to do your research. And I was really happy to, um, find the writing gym and find that that's, you know, was the help I needed to get this manuscript done. So good. Thank you so much for sharing Vivian. It's been fantastic to have you here and for you to share your journey and all your great advice with us. If you like what you've heard and are interested to see if you're the right fit for the writing gym, here's what to do next. Head to www.datewiththemuse.com slash publish now and book an appointment to speak with our team. Here's how it works. We'll get on the phone for about 45 minutes and we'll get crystal clear on three things. The best way for you to publish, the best way to achieve your publishing dream, and the exact strategy you should be using to reach your publishing goals. Remember, publishing a book well doesn't happen on its own. You need expert guidance to make it happen. We've helped writers all over the world to finish, publish, and sell their novels well, all while sharing their unique story and making the world a better place along the way. To see if we can help you to do the same, head to www.datewiththemuse.com slash publish now. I'm Mandy Brixey, personal trainer over in the writing gym, and we'll talk soon. Happy writing. And hey, since you listened all the way to the very end of the episode, here's this week's quirk of the week. I don't want to be a rat, but Annalisa is actually a former member of the board of directors of the League of Vermont Writers and has spoken very frequently at several of their events. Happy writing. Happy writing.